Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today, I'm going to show you how to do this easy 3D pixel stretch effect. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer. And if you want to learn how to edit photos, you came to the right place. So let's get started by deleting everything I've created so far. And the first thing you want to do is to select just the background. So we have a mask that will afterwards show us where the pixel stretch effect is going in a live preview that is super awesome, very useful. Okay, so to do that, go over here to your selection brush tool and you want to go to the add mode, set this to a nice big size like so, and then just select the background like this. Easy peasy as you can see, very nice. Next step, you want to go a little bit smaller with your selection here and you want to go to the subtract mode and then just for example here for the hand remove a little bit of that we don't need that then here you have a part where you want to add that in a little bit that was too much so let's go to the other direction this is always a little bit of a dance with that tool down here we need a little bit more of that with the shoe very nice and here also give me some more shoe I'm happy with that. So next I'm going to click on refine to help me refine the selection a little bit more, especially up here in the hair looks actually pretty good. I'm happy, 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 happy. Yes. Okay. We can do this. That looks good. And we can always change it later on. Don't worry about that. It's a mask. It's non-destructive. So next you want to click here, right side, on the mask layer icon, boom. And you can see this has created a mask for us where our subject now is hidden. The reason for that is because we want to apply it on our pixel stretch. So the pixel stretch is not visible where the subject is. So it can go behind the subject, right? Okay, that makes sense, right? So we want to drag out that mask from our background layer and then also turn it off. So we see everything again. Good. Now select the background layer again. Here is something very, very important. You want to look at the bracket and it has to say pixel in there, not image pixel. That's important. Next thing that's important is if there is a little lock icon here, that means that layer is locked. So you need to click on that lock icon so it goes away and the layer is unlocked. Okay. Next step we need to go is over here where the tools are, you want to select the rectangle mark your tool. So click and hold until this pop-up menu comes with all the selection tools in there and then select the rectangle mark you tool. Okay, with that, zoom into the picture a little bit and select a nice colorful area that you want to stretch out afterwards. So I'm going to go with this area here that is nice. It has a lot of different elements in it. That looks good. And you want to select a small narrow area like this, not too wide, right? Okay. So when we have selected this on your keyboard, you want to press control C to copy and then control V like Venus to put it in there again, and then control D to deselect. Now we have selected this little strip of pixels in here. And the next thing we need to do is to use the move tool with the move tool. You can see you get these handles here and you can stretch out that right now. This is where the pixel stretching is happening, right? So zoom out a lot, a lot, a little bit more. Okay. That looks good. And then you make this really wide like so long strip. Well, it's maybe a little bit too much. Let's go like that. That looks pretty cool. Okay. So Next thing, this is an important step. Don't miss this step. You want to click right click on your layer with the stretch strip in there and say rasterize, not rasterize and trim, just rasterize. This is important because otherwise Affinity Photo might act up a little bit, do some strange things. You don't want to have that happen. Okay, let's make this a little bit smaller. So we have this area here and you can see on the sides where it is stretching, it is starting to become transparent. You can use that if you want to have that starting point that is transparent on your 3D stretch. That's OK. Do that. But I want to start with 100 percent. So what I'm going to do is to again use my rectangle mark you tool and just select that area and then hit delete on my keyboard and delete that area. You can see now 
I have a very nice crisp starting point. Well, well, there is a little bit for transparency, but we're going to ignore that for now. Let's go to the other side where we have the same problem and we're going to snip this off. So let's go here and then snip, snip. Let's cut this. Let's see if we had everything. No, there's a little bit left. We want to also cut this. Boom, there we go. So now we have our area here. And this is already the perfect thing we need to have. Now, what you want to have now is to decide where should everything go? Where do you want to bend that? You can be super creative with that. I would suggest at that point that you right click on that layer. I will call it pixel stretch, by the way, or let's call it just stretch stretch like this so we know what we layer we are talking about this is the stretch layer right click and duplicate that layer because you might want to go back if you don't like what you have done so just so you have a backup of that right okay so we can hide one of those and then the other one and this is again important on your keyboard with that layer selected press ctrl g to create a group of that right and then what you want to do is to use that mask and drag it down here into that group and turn it on so you can see now our pixel stretch effect is going behind that person this is what i promised you when we started that tutorial good so the group is important because now we're gonna warp our pixel stretch and for that I need the mask to stay in place. The mask shouldn't move, just the pixel stretch strip should move, right? Okay, let's do that. So with that pixel stretch select, go over here to mesh warp and select the mesh warp tool, right? Like this. And then you can start and drag this around. You can see how super easy and fun that is and how creative this is. So this is where the fun starts, where the art starts, where the creativity starts. It's a little bit mind bending uh, to figure out where to put these points, how to stretch them correctly. So here are some important pointers for you to understand. With these long handles, each of these points has one handle. You want to go and you can move this around to tell you where your stretch is going to go. So this is the first part. We want to switch over to the other side. And then again, we can stretch this over here like so. And you can also move these points in any kind of way, in any kind of direction. Now, this part here. That is also important. It doesn't look important right now, but the reason why it is important is because this will bulge your 3D band inside or outside. So you can make it look like a half pipe, like a tube. You can make it really give this kind of 3D feel. So that's really important. Uh, let's go over here and also bring this over so you see what is happening here where this really cool effect is starting to evolve for us right now this is looking like so and we want to play around with this a little bit more right now what you can see here is that this is not twisting this is not going the other side it doesn't have that kind of cool awesome interesting 3d feel so what we are going to do is to use one of these points up here and then just push it to the other side and move the other one over and you can see suddenly this is going like a spiral and this is what we want to have so now we're gonna push these down so you can see here oh very nice band can you see that here beautiful has a really cool 3d effect you can see here when i move this around this will give me this kind of bending of the surface, this kind of 3D effect that makes it even more interesting. And you can do really, really cool stuff with that and spend a ton of time on figuring out where you want to put what in your design. So this is where the really playful, artistic, creative part comes in and everything becomes super interesting and dynamic at that point, right? So again, we can move these parts here around on the other side and decide where should everything go. Again, you can also switch these points over again like this to have another twist in here, another spiral form, and then move these handles accordingly to put everything into place. And you can see 
the dynamic of everything is really up to you. Again, this area down here, these two smaller handles give you that kind of 3D effect that turns it into a half pipe that gives it the surface a bend in itself. You can see here is going like a U shape right now. And this makes it even more interesting, even more playful. You have to be a little bit careful at that point you can see here for example that the U shape is going like this and you can see here the inside of the pipe but then suddenly the outside of the pipe does not appear so sometimes well affinity photo is not really a 3d program so this is more like faking a 3d effect so you have to be a little bit careful with that but don't worry too much about it. The main thing, the, the most important part here is that you have fun and this looks cool and uh, you just create happiness for yourself by doing these effects. So don't get too like crazy about if it's 100% right uh, what you're creating or not, right? Okay, so let's put this in here so it at least stays inside of the picture. That seems to be an important part. And then we can say, okay, we're happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click on apply up here. Boom. And this is going to render it. Now here is a trick that is really awesome. What I'm doing at that point is that I'm right clicking on that stretch that we have created here and I will duplicate that again like so. And then I'm going to set the blend mode to screen. You can see suddenly it starts to glow really cool, very dynamic, very energy powered. And then you go to effects and you want to use a little bit of Gaussian blur. And this can even give you this little bit of shine around that, right? So this makes it even more cool. You can see here here, when you look at that area down here and you turn this on and off, that this gives everything a nice, like, how can I say, I don't know, like this um, old school sci-fi glow effect, really cool. I really like it. You can use it if you want to. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be used, right? So a last thing that I would suggest you doing is that you create an extra layer here. I will call this D and G, and this is for our good old dodge and burn. Um, you don't have to use that, but generally I find it's a good um, effect to do. Uh, you want to set this to soft light. That's important as a blend mode. Then open up this here and probably go to your normal RGB slide. No, not really. Uh, you want to go here to, yes, this hue. That's good because there we have on the left side our area that goes from white to gray. And with this, I can simply now take a brush uh, let's see, let's make this a little bit bigger here and softer like so. I'm using Control and Alt, press it at the same time, then click and drag my mouse to resize and soften my brush or harden my brush. And you can see here now I can paint in here. Actually, I want to have this very soft like so. And then also reduce the opacity. Let's go to 25%. And now I can paint in here a little bit and maybe also down here a little bit to make this area here a bit darker. And then you can also use your erase brush on the areas where you don't want to have that effect and just remove that again. So you can see here that this area here is getting a little bit brighter again. Then we take our brush down here and what do we want to have darker? This area here, make this even more dark like so. Okay, and so we get a nice effect that gives everything a little bit more shape, makes it even more dynamic, even more 3D. So that can be a very nice effect to use. So you can see here now, if I turn this on and off, you can see how this is really shaping the surface a little bit more, give me a little bit more dynamic in there. And this is how you create this amazing effect. Let me know in the comments if you like that and if you want to see more effects like that. Thank you very much and see you in my next tutorial. Bye!